My name is Susana Dominguez. I'm a project engineer for Royal Electric. So uh, when I was little, I, I liked working with um, my hands and uh, people told me, oh, you're gonna be in construction then. And, I, and it kind of just stuck to my head. Um, and then throughout school, uh, I was particularly better at math than other subjects. So um, when I talked to my counselor, he's like, why don't you become an engineer? And that's kind of how I got into the, the field. I studied at Cal Poly Pomona for civil engineering. Uh, my primary focus at the time was transportation engineering. So uh, I had an interest in um, basically the theory of how you know you do your in, your engineering designs for freeways, uh, highways, uh, how many people travel from one area to another, and being able to use engineering to design things to be safe. Um, you know, with speeding, you know, help them with speeding, lowering speeding by creating certain designs. Like, uh, like if you're going down a, f a freeway ramp, like if you go like 90 miles an hour, you start feeling, right? Like you can't control, like that was made by design so that you don't go that fast. Um, so I like that you were able to kind of help people and uh, with their well-being and they kind of don't know that all of this all everything has been designed to protect them but yet it's there and i ended up finding a construction firm that offered me an internship so i worked part-time in that uh, construction firm doing electrical work for with traffic engineering uh, civil heavy civil work and uh, street lighting. So I worked with another company uh, uh, with working at traffic signals. And um, so one thing that we did is we worked on covering the gaps between all the service work that was happening uh, for, the, for LAX. So uh, we were piecing together the gaps between uh, new, new uh, highway uh, infrastructure that was happening and the connector, uh, the LAX uh, Crenshaw connector that was going to help bring people to LAX. Uh, so we were covering the gaps between that work and we worked with Lawa. And uh, so I actually found uh, Royal because of a recruiter reached out to me and she had reached out to me before. I just wasn't aware of, you know, the reach that Royal had. Um, I, I started researching how long Royal had been a part of LAX's history. And I realized that I didn't know a lot about, you know, LAX's history because Royal comes out in, in, their, in, in LAX's safety video, like, like they're just so ingrained with airport work that to see trucks like it's a that was like the main company that comes out um that is involved with lax that's that's huge um so i thought i gave the opportunity to learn about airfield work and expand my knowledge of traffic uh, from tra traffic signal and street lighting I started as a senior project engineer in 2023 with uh, working under Chris Bain. Even though I report to Chris, uh, I do interact a lot with the field. A lot of my work involves uh, schedule check-ins. So it's a checking in with our foreman, seeing that if we're on track, uh, adding productivity, uh, labor hours uh, to our schedule in order to see uh, if there's any delays and projecting where we're going to be at with quantities and um, our productivity by the end of each phase. Typically we have our tasks assigned by the day of the week uh, depending on what meetings we have to provide and the updates we have to provide. Um, even though I am mostly in the office, I 
there are assignments that I have that involve me going out into the field, for example, uh, verifying our advice, uh, meeting with the engineers uh, from LAWA. And um, typically that takes me uh, to the field where, you know, I serve as support to the guys. Um, they know that if they need anything, they can reach out to me. Um, if even if it's not uh, particularly related to an RFI, if uh, they need plans, they need updates, they they need to know where a, where a quantity needs to get charged to uh, be able to bill for it, they know they can reach out to me and um, I'm there to support them. So a, a typical day for the guys would begin at the Pershing lot. Um, where they drop out, drop off their personal vehicles and pick up their royal equipment that needs to be brought in. Um, then they'll go to post 23 where they have the security check for their badges, make sure that everyone has uh, the correct credentials so that they can enter the airfield. Once they pass the check-in, they meet at uh, whatever lay, lay down yard has been set up. Um, this, you know, there are different phases, so there are different check-ins depending on what point of the phase they're at. And once they reach that uh, lay down yard, they are able to do their stretch and flex where they can, they talk about uh, safety, any incidents that may have occurred, or uh, anything that they need to review about the work that is being being completed that day. If they're doing manhole work, then they'll go over, uh, you know, checking equipment, make sure that, you know, the guys are safe down there, checking different things that they, they use. And then once they finish their safety orientation, um, they, they're, they're set up, they already are set up the day before to, they know the work that is happening so then they'll split up by their foreman and they'll continue either the work that they started the day before or they'll start their new assignment currently we are in phase three uh, we're finishing up the remainder of the work uh, in order to get into our post phase work uh, today we we saw some of the guys uh, they were working on pulling wire uh, into some of the new fixtures uh, there were some cans that were poured, so they're uh, getting inspected. They, the guys left them open so that inspection can check them. Um, we also had a few, uh, two crews working on a painting of the numbers of uh, the signs. Uh, they were freshening up paint. Um, and then we also had a team uh, working on uh, Keep cleaning out and vacuuming the the base cans uh, because we just had some rain. And uh, lastly, we had a crew working on the switching out fixtures, putting in the final fixtures uh, once the base cans already had been poured and the dam ring had been installed. Uh, they were installing the final fixture. And then um, this uh, once today is over, this will be the last day of our day shift. We will be switching into night shift to work on our post phase work, um, and the post phase work will be a couple of nights um, to make sure that the runway is able to open. Uh, then we'll be going into phase four A. Four A is uh, our investigation work where we have our electrical investigation into the manholes that we're gonna be working on during the phase. And then we'll be, uh, in conjunction of that investigation, we'll be doing potholing uh, to make sure that there is no, uh, any problems with our current scope of work. And um, with once that phase 4A is complete, we'll be able to jump into phase four and um, where we can continue our work. Um, this would be in a separate part of the airport uh, that overlaps with phase three. Um, and then once 
phase four is over, we'll be able to go to phase six, which is the last phase of work. Um, once phase six is done, we'll be able to demobilize and the project will be done by the end of 2024. I think our relationship with Granite and Lawa has been incredible. Um, it's been different than at other places I've worked at before. Um, we're constantly communicating and coordinating, uh, which is something that should be typical of construction, but it's something that I hadn't come, ac come across as often as I did here at Royal. Um, Granite is, you know, a big company, so I wasn't expecting that close relationship with their PM team. Um, once there's a tr where if there's any trouble out there, uh, and we we can communicate it over to Granite and to Lawa, pretty much right away, and you know we come together. They have no problem uh, creating you know meetings to be able to go over problems. Um, it can go as as quick as making a call and saying, hey, we have a problem here and, you know, being directed of how we can all, how we can all pitch in our ideas to fix it. And it could go as deep as creating meetings that, you know, where engineering gets involved and the FAA gets involved. Um, it's honestly been very refreshing to work with that, that type of communication between the owner and the prime. Uh, I absolutely love my job. Um, I get I get to work with the field and coordinate what they do. You know, they're out there building it and they might just go to me for a reference or for for support and I know that they're genuinely caring about what what they're doing so just to be a part of of that is like privilege to me so uh what i love working about royal is um it's a different atmosphere you actually feel like people want you to succeed um you can ask questions and not feel like you're being judged for not knowing something um it the amount of collaboration is, it's amazing. Um, I know that I can go to Jerry for any, any questions that I have. Um, and to be able to go to a superintendent or to a, an operations manager or an executive and be provided with an answer that's not, you know, like derogative. Um, I think it's it's something I hadn't come across. Primarily, my goals aren't very feel very title um, oriented. They're more expertise related. Like um, I like to know more about the ins and outs of airfield work. Um, I want to get to the level that Steve Romero and Jerry Lacanas are at. Um, it's two people I look up to the most. Um, I want to be as hardworking as Chris Bain, you know, like I want to have all these qualities from all these amazing people more than, than you know, if I, I can run a project, but if there aren't specific people within that project, it's like, you know, they make the whole experience come together. Um, everyone that I worked with at Royal has something amazing to bring to each project and so my my goals are to keep going and keep being surrounded by these people and hopefully something will roll off on me as far as the opportunities and construction i think women are missing out i i feel like there is a lot of lack of trust um, because they feel like they wouldn't be able to do it or um, just because it's been known to be, um, you know, a man's type of career. Um, I, I think times are changed and everyone, even within the field, there's such a push um, to have everyone be successful regardless of your sex. 
it's it's the time to jump in and take advantage that times are moving forward and you know there's people that want women to be, to succeed in this role not just be able to do it but to succeed and take on leadership roles within the fields within the office um, I think the time is now.